Shalom. I am Dr. Ann Davis. Yeshua said to his disciples, to you disciples, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now, where are the mysteries? The mysteries are in scripture. That's where they are. But to them, and he was pointing to the crowd, to the people who had come to hear him, him speak, it has not been granted. Now, that applies to us today. Who is a disciple? A disciple is a follower. Anyone who is dedicated to learning scripture and following Yeshua and, and obeying God, that's a disciple. And now, how many Christians are disciples? Probably not too many. So to the Christians who are not disciples, they are not dedicated followers of Yeshua, it has not been granted for them to uncover the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now. I assume you're listening, you are a disciple. How do we uncover the mysteries? This session is going to offer just one example with the parable of the mustard seed. So I call it the mystery of parables, one example, parable of the mustard seed. Now I will let you know that I have written a book uncovering mysteries in the parables with Haggadic Midrash. What is Haggadic Midrash? Haggadic Midrash is an artistic commentary on a verse or passage in the Hebrew scriptures. So my suggestion, and I will defend this suggestion, I believe I'm right, is that every single parable in the New Testament is some kind of commentary on the Hebrew scriptures. So for every parable you have to find the link to the Hebrew scriptures. Now let me go in and show you how this works. The parable of the mustard seed, we read, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, and this is smaller than all other seeds. But when it is full grown, it is larger than, a, than the garden plants and becomes a tree. Now you have to be like the people of, of the first century at the time of Yeshua. You know what a mustard plant was. Um, they, they grow in, in Israel, and th this is what it looks like. I mean, this is a field of, of mustard plants. They're very small, they're very scraggy, and, and there are these seeds that you get from the mustard plants. Now, the parable goes on, and it says, when it is full grown, when this mustard plant is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree. But look at it when it's full grown. It's a tiny little it's almost like a weed. It's a, it's, it's, it's a shrub. And then it goes on and it cites from the Hebrew scriptures so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. And Matthew is citing from Ezekiel. Now, you have to know what to do when you see a citation. The people of the first century had memorized scripture. They didn't have books. They learned it by memorization from the time they were small children. And what it, but they, they didn't memorize verse by verse, they memorized block by block, that's how they memorized. So this kicks off a block and you have to go back to Ezekiel and, and try to identify, we'll never know exactly what the memorized block was, but you can look at it in its context and that's probably the memorized block. So we go back to Ezekiel and we read, I will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and set it out. I will pluck from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. Now, these cedars grew in Lebanon, which is just north of Israel. And they're very tall trees, which you see here. Compare it to the mustard plant. The mustard plant is not a tall and lofty tree. What's going on here? There's something strange and puzzling. We're going to have to figure it out. Well, Ezekiel talks about the lofty top. At the very top is where the new life is growing. It's the topmost, it's a tender one. And furthermore, God is going to plant it on a high and lofty mountain, which is an allusion to Mount Sinai. So what he's doing is he is selecting those who, in scripture they're called the righteous ones. Not that they're perfect, but they have a heart. It's all it all depends on heart. If you have a heart that wants to grow closer to God, you are at the lofty top of the cedar tree, and God is in the process of selecting those, not for who will be saved or not saved, but who will participate in the remnant. Now, Ezekiel goes on, and we read, On the high mountain of Israel I will plant it, that it may bring forth boughs and bear fruit and become a stately cedar. Bear fruit is our clue because if you are a dedicated disciple of Yeshua, you are bearing fruit for God. You can learn a lot more in the book Uncovering Mysteries in the Parables with Haggadic Midrash. You can find it at Amazon. 
Bible Interact also has two websites, BibleInteract.com, BibleInteract.tv, and both of them will link to our store. They also have wonderful teachings and all kinds of information there on our websites. So do go to the websites, but uh, take a look. You, you might be interested in the book, Uncovering Mysteries and the Parables with Haggadah Midrash. Shalom. Bible Interact is a group of Bible scholars and biblical archaeologists who promote the Hebraic nature of Scripture and view the two Testaments as one unified message. They explain how they use a first century approach to searching the Scriptures, and they share their methods and discoveries for discussion and dialogue. They invite your comments and participation on BibleInteract.tv.